In an emergency, of course, every second counts. So what happens when first responders themselves run into trouble out there? Blocked roads, remote locations. Getting to those in need is not always safe and definitely not always easy. Now, imagine helping uh, uh, by showing up from the air, getting around those obstacles, those roadblocks, finding that remote area more quickly. I'm not talking about a plane or even a helicopter, but a compact emergency response aircraft. There's a new company, it's called Go Aero, that has launched a worldwide competition with a $2 million prize, challenging more than 200 teams in 85 different countries to build a compact aircraft that can carry a first responder, evacuate victims, and deliver supplies when other options can't do the job. Joining us now is Go Aero founder and CEO Gwen Leiter. Gwen, good to see you. Good to see you. So this is like a single occupancy drone, basically, right? Yeah. So yes, at Go Aero, we are focused on this singular mission, which is saving lives. And we are creating all new aircraft. So if you imagine a helicopter at the one end of the spectrum, helicopters are great emergency response tools, except they require a pilot, they are expensive to procure, they're more expensive to operate over the course of their lifetime, they have difficulty in and out of tight spaces. At the other end of the spectrum, you have a drone, similar to things that we see people using all the time. They're great at delivering a pizza or a pint of blood, but what is really missing is something in the middle. It is an emergency response flyer capable of bringing a first responder to someone in need, rescuing someone who needs help, or bringing needed goods, supplies, and services to people who need them, whether it is a wildfire in uh, New Jersey or North Carolina or Los Angeles or flooding in Asheville or in Spain, or frankly, everyday medical emergencies where, where there is a car accident and traffic stops and an ambulance can't get to that person. It does seem like the need is growing and growing with wildfires and natural disasters happening in places where they don't typically happen and they seem to to be larger, but your company has been focusing on creating this kind of aircraft. Why open it up to have this competition to bring in models and, and, um, and designs from the public? So um, we have teams from 85 different countries working. And part of the reason why we open this up is because um, we are asking the best minds to design for a number of different scenarios. So there are aircraft that will be better for the wildfire situations. And there are aircraft that will be better for um, urban response. And there are aircraft that will be better for earthquakes. And so having a multitude of different types of aircraft allow us to be able to meet the needs of those who need help when they need it. So, so they are primarily drones, right? So is there like a remote operator or is it AI? Is the, is the thing flying itself somehow? Talk to me about the options. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, a huge continuum along the autonomy um, platform, right? So um, there are aircraft that are completely autonomous. You, you press the button, it goes where it needs to go. There on the other end of the spectrum, there are aircraft that are uh, somewhat remotely controlled, to, to use your words. And then there is that continuum, wow. so where it's everything in between. And that's what we're working on. And frankly, going back to your original question, part of the reason why we have teams all around the world with the best engineers, the best minds, the best companies partnering with us is so we get that continuum and so that we're pushing um, the technology, not only in autonomy, but in um, a whole host of other areas. So you came up with this, this desire because you were in a situation with your dad that you needed medical help and you were stuck in traffic. Mm -hmm. You've spoken to first responders mm -hmm. as you've been in the process of, of working on this. What have they told you? So um, as we were designing the technical rules and guidelines over the course of about uh, uh, six months, we had spoken with um, so many different first responders around the world. And we asked them, what do you need that you do not have? And again and again, it was the helicopter, the drone, there's that something in the middle. Um, and so yes, um, there was one day uh, where I was with my parents and my father had um, a chest pain and we called the ambulance. Uh, the ambulance came quickly. I went behind him in my car and there was traffic. And I remember saying over and over again, please move, please move. There has move. to be a better please way. There has move. to be a and better thought, way, right? We, we yes. should be harnessing yeah. this technology to make sure that nobody ever has to say, please move again. Oof. So glad you're working on that technology, Gwen. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you, Gwen. Thank, Thank you. you.